but no glint of water. The acacia trees that followed the, those fitful courses were dark witches' brooms of hostile folds. At intervals, the odd baobab gesticulated, a giant, angry triffid. Flocks of white goats picked at the slopes on the side of the road, but it was hard to see what they could find worth eating on that stony screen. A sprinkle of wild olive saplings failed to conceal the bears below. Behind the first range of mountains, I could see a series of hills, their tops peeping through a sea of early morning mist, which was dissipating as the heat began to take its toll. I thought for a moment of the buttercup-strewn meadows and shadow-dappled orchids of Kent, where I'd spent my childhood days. The green promise of glades enticing you into darkness, the haze of bluebells and wild garlic under the trees. Before their marriage had turned sour, my parents used to rent a cottage on a trout fishing stream. And I could still remember the thwack of cow parsley against the bonnet as Dad forced the car down the lane, and the soft humidity of mid-filled evenings when I was supposed to be asleep, and they sat talking on the patio. That careless lushness had come to represent beauty for me, the only scenery that might conceivably be worth dying for. But this, so many had died fighting for this. Beautiful. Yes, I volunteered politely, but so bleak, Abraham. Michaela, why did you choose to set your novel in a fictional African country, but yet throughout the narrative intersperse real people like Kofi Annan, who we know and love? Was this for a fear of some sort of political backlash? the next time you set foot on African soil. Why the fictitious African country? Um, it, was, um, it was something I was rather uncomfortable with, but it was dictated really by the story because I wanted to write about this border dispute. Um, and I'm very familiar with the details of the Eritrea Ethiopia border dispute because I followed it very closely. And I know that it was triggered by an incident in Badme and various battle fronts that opened up. I know that there are disputes over what was the original trigger incident. Um, I, I, I know her story very, very well, and I know the areas of contention between the two governments. And I didn't want to get sucked into that dispute, the real dispute, because there were points I wanted to make um, um, that uh, would be dissipated if I'd ended up describing the real uh, process of uh, international arbitration that followed that dispute. Um, there, were, there were several um, cases that followed the war between Eritrea and Ethiopia. There was um, a, a, a case that concerned where the border lies, and there was another case that was about who owns, owes what in war damages. Um, and I found both of those cases very interesting, and I really wanted to take elements from both um, and explore them. But they happened over five or six years, and I didn't want to set my book over five or six years. So um, in the end, I sort of I was facing all these different elements, and I just thought I'm going to have to make it up. And by making it up, um, I think you know you get away from people saying uh, because both Eritreans and Ethiopians feel extremely strongly over what happened, and both have a different account of what happened. I felt I didn't want to get embroiled in that whole horror um, and have, you know, a novel which I was planning to be, uh, to write, then discussed always in, in terms of, well, that's not what happened, you know, on that date in question, um, and you are obviously a propagandist for the other side. Um, uh, I, I'd already had those um, discussions and debates with my non-fiction books, so that was really why. Um, uh, and, uh, uh, once you make that decision, then all sorts of things follow from it. But I think anyone who reads the book will understand that while it's set in, that it's very much set in the Horn of Africa, you know, from the landscape, from the names, from the decor, from the architecture, 
from the geography. Uh, this is not set in Kenya. You know, it's not generic Africa. It's not. It's not Uganda. It's not. I mean, you know, you can tell precisely. It's very obvious, for example, that the capital city, which I call Lira, is very obviously Asmara, and uh, you know, anyone who's been there will recognise it. So yes, it's it's a, it's a fictional country name, but uh, I think people will know which part of Africa they're in.